BB operations. The Shafar. The Shafar has many meanings. The Shafar has many attributes. Many times when we think of the Shafar, we think of war. But that is not the only meaning of the Shafar. One of the first attributes of the Shafar happens in Genesis 22. And there it means provision. Where God provided a ram in the bush who was entangled by the horns and provided a substitute for the sacrifice of Isaac. The Shafar also means battle formations. In Joshua 5, in the Battle of Jericho, Joshua summoned seven priests and gave them seven horns to blow. The Shafar also means confusion or confusing the enemy. In Judges uh, 7, Gideon and the 300 had horns. They had shafars, and when they blew, the Midianites' army began to attack themselves. The shafar also means the stopping of war. In 2 Samuel 2, uh, Joab blew the shafar, and the army halted and pursued the Israelites. The shafar also means authority. In Ezekiel 29, God said, on this day, I will raise up a horn out of the tribe of Israel. And on that day, you will begin to open your mouth and speak. And that speaking he was talking about was giving the prophet the authority. The Shabbat also means prophecy. In 1 Samuel 10, the prophet Samuel anointed Saul. He poured the oil on him and then he kissed him and then he told him that when you go to the hill of God, that when you get there, that there will be prophets that will descend. And those prophets will be playing the guitar. Those prophets will be playing the harp. Those prophets will be playing the tambourine. But they also will blow the shafar. And when they blow the shafar, you will begin to prophesy just like them. But what does it mean for us on tonight? The shafar means for us to assemble means to assemble. Now, what does that mean? You may be saying, well, Michael, we're already assembled. We're here. We're in the building. We're in the tent of meeting. We're in the tabernacle. We're in the temple. But assembly means, uh, in this instance, to gather your mind, to gather your heart, to put yourself in focus. One of the things that the Shafar does when it was blown in, 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 in Numbers 10, God had instructed Moses to construct two silver trumpets and to blow them. And when he blew them, then the Israelites knew to stand at attention because their next assignment would come to that Shabbat. And one of the things that this religion has done to us is that it has tricked the body of Christ on our definitions and understanding of praise and worship. And so what has happened lately in these last 10 to 15 years is is that we only praise God when we've been told we're going to get something. And we only worship God when we need him to do something. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So when was the last time you fasted? Come on. Mm. Was it because you needed God to step in and save the house from foreclosure? When was the last time you consecrated yourself? Was it because you needed God to come in and step in and save the marriage? See, we need to re realize that in order to assemble ourselves, we have to put God at the pole position. That means that our issues do not predicate our worship. Many of us only worship God when we need him to respond. But when we understand that he is in the position, in the pole position, that means he sets the pace. That means he is the, he is the, the, the grid. That means wherever you move, wherever you go, it is predicated on the worship, not on your issue. And so on tonight, I need you to understand that as we assemble, gather your thoughts, gather your mind, eliminate your distractions.
shut your cell phone off. Don't think about what will happen at work. Don't think about the doctor's report. Don't think about what's going on in your marriage. Don't think about the way with children. Remember the assignment of the Shafar. And one of those assignments of the Shafar is to assemble. And to assemble means to define yourself and sharpen your focus so that you can be attentive to your assignment. And our assignment on tonight is to worship God. Our assignment is to worship God. Make God the pole position. Make him above our issue. Because that is when God will respond. Good evening, everyone. If you could please stand for a time of prayer. As you begin to speak in your heavenly language, we'll begin to give thanksgiving. We'll begin to worship the Father and Spirit and the truth. For this is the hour where the true worshipers assemble themselves. Not because we're in a place, but because of who he is.
once again for yes the spirit of prayer and the spirit of judgment and burning is coming upon you and many of you have asked of me uh, even as my servant Moses uh, that you may see my face uh, but as I told my servant Moses uh, that no man can see me and live uh, God says uh, be prepared now uh, for another place of death to who you are uh, for I have been trying to get the glory uh, in your life uh, so that your family members uh, will no longer see you uh, but that they may see me uh, for there you have been in the way uh, for too long uh, and God says
this shall be a season of dichotomies. He said, even at uh, uh, some of you in this room, even as uh, you've experienced hell, and even as you go lower, this is also going to be a season where I cause you to go higher. And even as you experience a loss, I'm going to cause you to experience great success. So, and the Lord says, even now, some of you in this room, you've looked past your 2016 because you experienced so much hell, and you've turned your eyes to 2017. But the Lord comes to them, He says, I'm looking for faith. He says, This year is still not over. What you believe me to do with her, and I come to prophesy. And the Lord says, even now, before this year is out, many of you shall have testimonies, and many of you shall see miracles. The Lord says, even now, yes, I come to heal, and yes, I come to deliver, and yes, I come to call you to cast out devils. But I hear God say, even now, I bring this an anointing for the unusual, unusual miracles, unusual signs and wonders in your life. And the Lord says, even now, many of you in this room are stuck in dead end jobs. But the Lord says, I come even now to move you. I come even now to shake you. I come even now to call you to be crushed. But even as I crush you, even as I even cause you to be humbled, I come to also lift you up. And I call you to be exalted. The Lord says, even now, do not be as them who have no hope. But know that your hope is in me. But I have your exceedingly great reward. But I will not leave you as them who do not have hope. But I come today to charge you. And I come today to let you know that I am Father, and I am a good God, and you shall not die, but you shall live to experience and taste of my goodness, says the Lord.
my glory in this season. I am coming for your hearts. And as many as you lay before me, you shall feel the increase of the weight of my glory. So much so that you shall become overcome by it. Even in the nighttime hours when you cry out for more of me, I shall begin to visit you in your dreams. And I shall begin to show you great and mighty things which you have not seen. I shall begin to restore unto you the years and the locusts and the canker and the palm of work is eating up before you. This shall be a year of recovery for many of you. For many of you cried out about your finances, about your jobs, and about your homes. And I say unto you, I shall begin to restore. Many of you shall feel the weight and you shall begin to uh, be restored in the next season. I say that 2017 shall be a year of door opening for many of you. For many of you, doors have been closed unto you. But I say that I am opening up doors that no man can shut. And you shall walk in with victory. You shall walk in with power. You shall walk in with authority. You shall walk in with dominion. And many of you have slept on your ministries. I'm calling you forth to walk in my power. To walk knowing that I am with you. To walk knowing that in the next season of your life, I shall stand next to you. For Lord, I've said in my word, I will be with you always, even until the end of the earth. And know that I am with you. For salvation shall come to your families. Salvation shall come to your sons and your daughters. You have cried out in the nighttime hours for their lives. And I want you to know that I hear you. And I've seen your tears. And I shall be with you even so much so that I shall use you to save them. This is the year that your ministry shall come alive. And I shall be, I I shall be one with you. And you shall be one with me, says the Spirit of the living God.
This is the hour where I will give you the grace to finish the call. For even as I allowed Moses to return into an old place with my power, I'm allowing you to return to places that you have given up on. For many of you have wrestled with the spirit of adoption and the spirit of abandonment, and you have dropped dreams, you've dropped callings, you've dropped ministries, you dropped gifts. But the Lord says, as I anointed Moses and I had given him the grace to go back into Egypt, in this hour I will put my fire upon you. I will break the spirit of fear. And I will break the spirit of defeat off of you. And in this, you will see a great resurrection of ministry, a great resurrection of your gifts. And even as Moses went back into Egypt and to rescue others, in this hour, I will give you my fire and my glory will fall upon you. And many shall come unto me because of your anointing. And I will allow many gifts to be resurrected. I will revisit old dreams. I will revisit old notebooks. I will revisit old paths and old songs. And I will give you the grace to finish what I started said the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. The name that's above every name. Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, what you did for me on Calvary. 
Spirit, even in your weakness, saying, God, so rejoice, for I am not forgotten about you, and you shall be called, accepted, and held, and answered, for you are not a city forsaken, but I remember my people, even on this night, said the Spirit of the living God. Come on, give the Lord the praise right now. The prayers of prior seasons. I heard the Lord say he's answering the prayers of dead brothers, dead granddaddies. God is answering prayers. I see bowls of incense being poured out. The prayers have become to a focus. And there are answers in this room right now. Go and get your hands up. Something is happening. I said, Let your hands and worship. The Lord is doing something unusual. You have had seasons where it seems as if the answers to your prayer and the answers to your intercession have gone without a, a, a release. But I promise time as you worship God in this season and press into intimacy, you will begin to see the answers to prayers that are over decades long. There are retroactive answers coming to you. Come on, worship the God who does not break a promise. Worship the God who does not forget the call of his beloved. His ear is not too heavy that he cannot hear, and his hand is not short that he cannot say. I believe God will be mighty to say, mighty to say, mighty to say, mighty to say. from disappointment right now. Mm. Uh, many of you have not had the faith for yourself. So having faith for your family is impossible. I said worship. God is affirming you tonight that you have not been ignored. Every prayer you have ever prayed has been recorded in heaven. Did you hear me when I said every cry you've ever made has been logged in heaven? And if you posture your heart the right way, there will be a rush of answers in your direction. Come on and cry, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> holy, 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 Come on, holy, 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 holy. He's answering you tonight. Yes, he's the one who is sorry. I have to deny it. He's the one who is the cross to the Holy Holy, 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 holy. Come on, lift your hands. You gotta recognize when the King comes in the building. Come on. 
to disappoint us. And tonight we cry, hold on. Hey, hold on. Come on. Hold it. Our hands are up. He's holding. Let's go. Come on, I want to hear you all these hands. I want to hear you cry. environment and pull out whatever you deplete of. Now be honest, 
if you don't have the full level of submission or the full level of surrender or the full level of mercy, when moments like this come, you reach up and receive it. Because when God's presence comes in the room, everything that you don't have, He is full of. So you reach for love, you reach for mercy, you reach for forgiveness. If you know you got stuff in your heart that hinders you from being Christ-like, you got to reach in the atmosphere and pull it out of there. Come on, lift your hands. There you go. You acknowledge that He is stronger than you. He is wiser than you. He has more love than you. You're not quite there. I, and, and worship, He gives you the great exchange. That's why we're talking about His perfection. I believe God is saying over these next few days, He wants to perfect that that concerns you. But if you don't worship, He doesn't have a door to put it there. Come on, I want you to lift your voice and cry. God has ever made. He is sworn by his own name. 
That's the highest authority in all of creation. He will not break his promise. And this week, even if you have to be in the midst of people that have hurt you, you won't feel it anymore because God is creating Christ's likeness in you. You don't have to react. You don't have to respond. The only people who want to set the record straight are the carnal. Jesus Christ set the record straight. You have a standard to live up to. And that standard is Calvary. Somebody lift your voice and say, Hold on! We're going to do a couple of things and we're going to get out your way. If you brought, and listen, if you're at this altar, you don't have to move. You don't have to move. At least, listen, I, we're not going to bring the Sunday morning thing in here. If you want to lay on the floor, lay on the floor. I pay for it. <laughs> if you have a picture of a family member you want to bring to the altar, come on and bring that now. Even some of you need to bring a selfie. Oh my goodness. Type of bondage that is in this room. Bring these pictures up here, will you? I just want to be holy. How do you really feel that? How do you really want that? I want to be holy. Just lay up on the altar. Lay these pictures on the altar. Don't be ashamed. I want to be holy. I want to be holy. God's desire for you. I feel the anointing in this room. I said, I feel the anointing in this room. Glory to God. generational sin patterns things that open the door for sin in family but how many of you believe that through prayer and worship God can anoint you to break the iniquity oh come on you lazy I said how many of you believe God can break the iniquity God can use listen and I'm a witness God can use your life and your decisions to break iniquity off your family the Bible says by one man's disobedience, sin came into the world, and by one man's obedience, its power was broken. All God needs to break a generational curse is a life that refuses to live under it. Who am I talking to? He only needs is a consecrated vessel that refuses to submit to the curse of families. Hallelujah to Jesus. Don't leave yet. We're going to pray. And I, I, I just think God might have something to say to some of you. Glory to God. We're going to cry out tonight and pray. And I want you to give me them lights for me. Turn them on if possible. That's the cry of my heart. I want to be holy. And listen to me. If you allow the Lord to fully convert you, reaching your family is an easy task. Yes, God. Some of the problem with us not being able to reach our family is that we're partially converted. If God can make you a burning man and a burning woman, your conversations reflect that thing in your life. And I'm just believing God to sanctify you wholly. So much so that you don't even have a desire to be like what's been before you. I'm a witness. He can do that. Is there anybody in here that can testify that the Lord has pulled you out of the curse patterns? Yes, sir. Come on. Is there anybody here that has seen yes, grace sir. extract you yes. from the narrative on your family? Yes, Some of your family members don't know what it is to stay married. Don't know what it is to finish school. You ought to be the loudest people in here yes, that God has extracted you from the patterns. Hallelujah. Now we're going to stand up. We're going to pray for a little while about these family members. Come on, stand to your feet. Now, those, especially those of you that need to, hey, Quest, can you move in? Especially those of you that have family members up here, we're crying out to God 
And I even want some of the prophets and intercessors and stuff to come and help me lay hands on these pictures. Because I'll be leaving God for real answers. Listen, all nations is very unique. Our momentum months are actually the winter times. We get more souls in the winter. And I'll be leaving God. How many of you have seen what happened with Kanye West and getting admitted into a mental uh, hospital bed? Yes. Well, listen to me. There is a very powerful spirit of insanity and a very powerful spirit of depression that's released during the fall months. When people are reminded about what they didn't have and what they don't have, and, and even grief, like if you have ever lost a loved one, yes. many of you that have lost family members, if you've had a broken life, I know that there's a lot of people who gravitate towards a grandmother or a, a father, and then when they die, it's almost like a piece of them dies for years. So at Thanksgiving and at Christmas, you know, you are reminded about their loss. How many of you know you can lead your emotions this 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 long? Come on, receive this. Listen, I know who I'm talking to and I know what I'm talking into. Satan wants to use these holiday seasons to spin people out into a cycle of unpredictable behavior because of things that have happened that they don't have answers to. But I believe in the power of prayer. I believe you don't have to get a divorce. I believe your children can be saved. I believe yes. your lost loved ones can be delivered. Yes, God. I can't speak for other churches, but here at All Nations, we believe in deliverance. Yes. And we believe in the power of curse breaking. And I don't care what addiction your people are under. Yes. I don't care what chemical thing, what, what alcoholism. Many of you have loved ones that are on alcohol, that are uh, alcoholics. And, and it's so much a part of how they act that they don't even consider it an addiction. How many of you know God can break the power? If you're going to be set free from alcoholism, you've got to be first set free from deception. Yes. Because it's a deceiving spirit that will make you think that's not you and that's not where you are. You still have that manageable. So even for a lot of our family members that are addicted, our sons and daughters that are smoking crack, you know what the devil has done even with this hookah. Now I'm not going to go into a whole theological display, but some of us just have addiction tendencies yeah. where we have a proclivity to be addicted to anything. Yeah. And so we need to pray about this spirit of addiction because as many of you know, it's not starting until you're 17 and 18 anymore. These things, how many of you know somebody addicted right now in their teens and preteens? Wave at me. You got a family member or somebody that's smoking every day or, or sneaking alcohol. This is hell. But I believe that you would be a better you if you could see your life, bless your family. And here's why. Many people in the body of Christ don't answer their callings out of the guilt that if I fully submit to God and my family don't respond, then I'm going to look like a castaway. If you didn't have that extra burden of feeling like you were a fraud or you were leaving your family behind, maybe you would have greater courage to yield to God. Who, who hears that? I believe and I prophesy that there is a way for you to say yes to God and not leave your family. That the anointing of God, many of you, I hear God say he's about to commission you to your house. You apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, those of you that have been getting healing activations and prophetic activations, this is the place to utilize that. They don't have to know what you're doing, but I believe the gifts of the Spirit can come alive around turkey, around stuffing, around game time. How many of you know you can prophesy during spades? Come on, Zion. I believe God is coming to open up heart and heart. Now, we're going to go into a time of intercession, but here's what I want you to know. Those of you, and this is a prayer principle, if you have resentment, unforgiveness, anger, bitterness towards any person's picture you put in here, Come on. you're not going to be a, a, a qualified intercessor. Come on, apostle. A spiritual principle is you can't pray for something you don't love. Come on, apostle. If, if, if you have judged... And I mean, in your heart, one of these people that you have of you praying, you're not going to be the best intercessor. Come on. When you have a prayer a project, a prayer task, you've got to renounce all the hurt these people have caused 
or their actions over you yes. because you want to be able to be heard by God. The Bible says if you if you you'll, uh, you go to God in prayer, you've got unforgiveness in an art with your brother. That is a familiar term. Praise the Lord. Yes. Then you've got to lay your gift down and you've got to pray. So if you got your daddy up here and you just got done calling him a deadbeat, then you can't pray until you forgive him. Come on, apostle. I'm not talking to black people. Yes, you are. Man. If you cannot pray for a man that you have you got to, if you're going to pray for him to be saved, you've got to release that hurt in your heart. Now, forgiveness does not mean that a person's action was okay. That's right. That's the challenge with forgiveness. The devil had me in unforgiveness for years because I believe that forgiving people meant that what they did was fine. But God showed me that unforgiveness was Satan's strategy to kill me. Bitterness will bring infirmity in your life. And when you forgive, it's not about giving them a favor. It's about removing yourself from the authority of the action. It's saying, I realize what you did was wrong, but as an act of my will. So when you are prompted to forgive, many of you get to about right here to do it. And it gets hard. We'll be honest and say, yeah, that happens to me. So I know what I'm dealing with, Miss Ruth. When it comes up and you're like, it's hard. You can, by an act of your will, yes, God. release people from the debt of their action in your life. Come on, Apostle. That doesn't mean you have to relate with them the same. It doesn't mean that they have to have the same space in your life. But to pray, you've got to walk in forgiveness. Come on. Now, I feel like I'm hitting the button. I said to pray, you've got to walk in forgiveness. And if you want to be integral, then just ask somebody else to pray until you can forgive. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Yes, God. There were people who prayed for my stuff for years because I wasn't at a point where I was ready to do it. But I'm telling you, when you want to be holy, and I mean that, forgiveness becomes a secondary consequence because I don't want to compromise anything that's not going to make me like God. Who feels like that? I just want to be on, holy. God. I just want to be holy. Come on. I just want to be holy. I don't want to be right. I don't want to have my point get across. I want to be holy. I don't even want to be heard. I just want to be holy. Come on. Yes. I'm going to lead you through some prayers. And then we're going to pray for our loved ones. And we're going to cry out to God. Glory to the Lord. And then what I may do is I may minister to some of you that are battling with addictions tonight. As a prophet of God, I believe that there's a lot of people in this room with severe deeply rooted addictions that you need God's word to go in and plug out and I'm going to rebuke shame and embarrassment because where you have shame and embarrassment you are prompted to lie Yes. so we're going to deal with that and then we, I, I believe we need to deal with addictions tonight because I'm telling you you know, some of you know some of you have been living like a slave so long you don't even know what freedom looks like the idea of it is so distant but I believe God can set you free. Who, be, who has that? Listen, I have the faith for you. Who has the faith for that? Uh, I want you to close your eyes and we're going to be honest with ourselves. Paul said, for well, this cause of man should examine himself. I want you to think about your disappointments, your hurts, your woundings with people that you're about to pray for. I want you to review and examine your heart what was done. Even if many of you have unforgiveness towards people who are no longer alive, that is still a possibility. There are people in your life that could die, be taken from you before you get the opportunity to acknowledge or find a place of closure. And we're going to release them. We're going to release them. Ah, uh, those of you that have been victims of adultery, those of you that have been cheated on, we're going to release them. Parents, even ex-lovers, boyfriends, girlfriends, we're going to release them. And we're going to cry out to God. Um, some of you parents also need to forgive your children. Some of that nagging is not just concern, it may be unforgiveness. That disappointment can grow into unforgiveness. If you're mad at how their lives turned out, what they did or did not do, we're going to pray this out. We're going to cry out. There you go. Let that come out. Let that come out. Let that come out. Let 
Lord, we know you desire to save. We know that you desire to deliver. But we're asking for divine appointments to operate. The conversations we have, the counseling we have, let there be reconciliation in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up husbands, all all this building, we lift up wives on this altar. Intercessors tonight, we cry out against the covenant breaking spirit, all spirits of adultery and anger and holdenness. Will you bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ? Every man that has left his home and left his children to go into wickedness and to go into adultery, we release the angels of God to begin to bring conviction now. Come on, pray in the name of Jesus. We ask for the breakthrough in the hearts of men. Let there be breakthrough. We find hard-heartedness. We find hardness of hearing. Begin to open up the hearts of husbands, the head of households. Oh, God, in the name of pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for wives that are under the spirit of hurt, under the spirits of fear, angry against their husbands. Will you pour out upon them the spirit of grace and supplication? In the name of Jesus, let there be a wife somewhere that can draw their husband back. Let there be a wife somewhere that cries until their husband turns. In the name of Jesus, we share tonight all anger and malice. We share tonight all bitterness. We share tonight all retaliation. In the name of Jesus, we pray for restoration in marriages. Restoration between husbands and wives. In the name of Jesus, we bind all hard-hearted enough. We bind all callousness. We bind all indifference. Where the love of many has waxed cold, let fire return to the covenant of marriage. In the name of Jesus, heal these houses. Heal these houses. Heal these homes. In the name of Jesus. We cry out tonight for the restoration of fathers and sons. Let the Elijah anointing be released this weekend where hearts are turned in the direction of each other. In the name of Jesus, let there be no abandonment, no rejection that increases in this season. But let the covenant of unity be released in these houses. In the name of Jesus, say to the Lord rebuke you. Say to the Lord rebuke you. Say to the Lord rebuke you. The blood is against you. The blood binds you. The blood gag you. The blood set up your way. We release angels of healing. Angels of restoration. In the houses that are represented here. In the name of Jesus. We pray for every daughter that has gone out into bondage. We lift up every daughter that has a lying love. We lift up every daughter that has gone wandering in the streets. We lift up every daughter trapped in a soul time. And we're crying for deliverance over the mountain. We're crying for deliverance. We're crying for deliverance. In the name of Jesus, open the tree ground. Open the tree ground. Let there be signs and wonders. Visit your own God. In the name of Jesus, grab their hearts according to your loving kindness. According to your tender mercy. Let their hearts open up tonight. In the name of Jesus, by loving kindness, you draw them. Let them see your loving kindness. In the name of the Son of God, we pray for every son, every righteous son, every firstborn son, every son of the right hand, every son that's part of the womb of the mother, every son that is the continuation of the seed of generations. Let the prodigals return home tonight. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of seduction. We bind the spirit. We bind the spirit of anger. We bind the spirit of insanity. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our male seed tonight. In the name of Jesus, it is their destiny to be somebody's husband. It is their destiny to be somebody's father. Don't let our men come home in body bags. Don't let our men be turned out to be disciples of women. The spirit of the version, but let that be a new release of the man. 
name of Jesus, we find the spirit of double mindedness. We find the spirit of bipolar. We break your power over our sons in the name of Jesus. And we promise that in the last days, you will pour out of your spirit upon all flesh. And our sons and our daughters, they will promise that the inheritance of the saints of God. Oh! 
Open your mouth. Talk to him. He's not being faithful. He's not being faithful. You're going to see the faithfulness of God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said you will see his faithfulness. Glory. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Callahan. I know I can come on you. I wish I had a praise. And I said you will see his faithfulness. He is not done. Come on, church. You will see his faithfulness. I prophesy he will be faithful to perform his word. A performance, a performance, a performance, a performance is coming to your life. A move of God is coming to your life. Get ready! God is not done with so many of you, with so many of your children. Thank you, God. Come here, Charles. I, I'm trying to leave you alone. I was really trying not to mess with you. But the Lord told me, your next step, here's where the grace is going to come. And I feel like this is an answer of wisdom for you. He said, your yes to your calling is going to bring the power of this thing in your life. You, you've, been, you've been attacking the adversary. God says, I'm going to give you a new strategy. If you yield to your call, Come on. the thing will break. Come on. God says, it's going to break in levels. It's going to break in levels. And Satan's going to say, yeah. I see it, Charles. I promise I see it. Ah, I just see it. I'm telling you, I see it. Some of you have been asking God for the next level to your deliverance. Let me tell you, a yes to God is a no to hell. A yes to God is no hell. All you got to do is yield to your calling. God will start arranging all kinds of stuff to get you free. Come on, church. How many people are here? I'm not saying that 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 I'm not Church, I'm here to tell you, that's how I got out. It was a yes. That thing will knock the taste out your mouth. You don't even have to know where to begin. Yes is where you start.